I believe that Jesus has the greatest deliverance ministry, and he is our model. And if he cast out demons, then we should cast out demons. Anything he did, he came here as an example. Those of you in those traditional churches that don't believe in deliverance, when them demons start hitting your house, you're going to look in that word for deliverance. Because it's going to come a time that's all you're going to have is the word of God. There's nothing else. See, all these substitutes, all these, you know, natural things that you're trying to pull on, you better pull on that word because it's the only thing that's going to stand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When things start showing up in your room, manifesting demons, oh, yeah, you, you wouldn't believe how many emails I get from that. This is a wicked world this, at this time. This is wicked. Some of y'all, anytime you pass 30 years old, this is nothing like when you were in high school and years back. This is another whole realm. They got more witches and warlocks walking through here and in the, in the hospital and everywhere. You need power and demonstration. And you need prophetic eyes. See, one time when I first, when I grew up, we always thought it, it was just for the pulpit. We thought, you know, we came to service and we thought the gifts was just in the pulpit. Maybe some of the missionaries had it and things are like that. But it was always set people. But, you know, I read in Corinthians where it said you just desired a gift. He says for the building of the saints, for the affecting to make us build up and be powerful. And he wants that for the building. He wants you built up in power. Because see that sometimes you're not going to have the prophetess at your house. You're not going to have the prophet. You're not going to have anybody and you're going to have to look to the king, to the king. Oh, my goodness. How many of you have my book? My new book has been released. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Today, I'm going to walk through a part of that. I like to always make sure that you are strapped, that when you go home, you know what to do after deliverance. See, I used to go to a lot of services, and I've been blessed to be a part of many great, great generals. But you know, one of the things I never saw is nobody tell them what to do after. It's great to have the phenomenal. It's great for the supernatural. But what do I do when I get home if, if I'm in a traditional church and nobody's, nobody's teaching me? You know, the prophetic war and decree book was birthed out of my cry unto the Lord when the enemy touched my daughter. You know, you don't really know how much of a warrior you are till somebody touch your kid. <laughs> Baby, they touch your kid, you pull out swords, you'll find word in you you never knew was even in there. <laughs> you thought you pulled on word, right? Huh. Let them touch your kid. But you know, God's got a plan for everything. See, some of y'all going through some stuff. Y'all need to stop whining. Warriors don't whine. They, they strap up. And they touch the heavens and find out why, what's going on. See, if you're on the same page with God, baby, he's going to tell you this battle is coming. It's for this. It's purpose for this. He'll tell you when it's time to move. He'll tell you when you don't move. He'll say, okay, you want to listen to what I say? I'll show you. Well, that's what happened with the prophetic war and decree. But as a result of it, that book was birthed. There was a prophetic war that came out of me that I had never. I touched the heavens. And immediately after, I got a download from God. And he told me, he said, I will keep her. It's in the book. You know, you know that's my new slogan. It's in the book. <laughs> so all you do is get the word of God and get my book and go to bed. It's in the book. Your healing is in the book. Let's get ready. We're going to move profusely here today. Because we have some other things that we have to get doing. Um, those of you, I'm not going to be able to sign books today because um, tonight... Because prophetic war and decree is, the, well, I did, it was one lady that I promised, I can't remember who she was. Yes, I promised that I would do hers. But we're going to focus on your deliverance and whatever it is that you came here for. Whatever you set your heart. You know, whenever I get ready to prepare to go to a healing and deliverance service, I set something in my heart. In Adana Shike. Oh, yeah, see, you got to know. See, some of y'all, y'all got to stop whining. Why do I hear all this whining in here? Y'all better strap it up. 
How do you think you're going to walk for God without a battle? What? The Bible said that the Lord is a man of war. Do you understand that? We got things to conquer. Yeah, but don't worry. He's left his comforter for us and the word. We got it. Let's get ready to work the word here. So our first part of our message for today is going to be track it down and kill it. So let me just, uh, you know, I'm also a prophetic coach. And I like, sometimes people call me, they think I'm just, you know, dial up prophet. Yeah, they find out five minutes into the call, they get it. Because I make my disclaimer. I'm not your dial up prophet. You can't pay me. That's not what I do. You're looking for the wrong person. Now, if you're looking for prophetic wisdom and you're looking for somebody to give you tools to get out, absolutely, we can work on that. But it is time that you have to track things down that are in your lives. Things are happening for a reason. None of this, oh, well, you know, it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. You track that thing down and find out what the origin of it is. Everything's got an origin from it. Let me give you an example. You got something, your grandmother, your mother's mother, this one, and now it's showing up in your house. Huh. Well, what'd that look like? That's a generational curse. That thing's showing up. But you got to track it down and know where it is. God gave you power and authority, and you're going to have to use it. But you got to know what you're dealing with. Something comes in your home. Next thing you know, somebody leaves a spiritual door open. And all of a sudden, you got a change in your home. Finances is all upside down. It's bitterness and stuff going on in the house. Oh, there's something going on. Thank you. Uh -huh. There's something going on. You got to track it down and see where we're going. But let me let you discover the work of the prophetic power. Let's go to walk the word tonight. It's going to come from Jeremiah 1 and 10. And it says, Behold this day have I set thee over nations. And over kingdoms to do what? To pluck up, root out, and to destroy and throw down. To build and to plant. That is the work of prophetic power. So when we're doing these prophetic war and decree, you wonder what we're doing? That's what we're doing. That is what you're doing. So let's talk about how do you prepare for the plucking up process. See, some of y'all want to think yourself happy. You done got a prophecy, and now you just think, oh, it's going to be well. But there's something you have to do. You got to walk the word. You got to live it. You do know holiness is still a thing, right? No, y'all don't sound like y'all. Y'all not convinced. Holiness is still a thing, and it's a requirement. Sometimes people think God is a Christmas tree. He just got stuff hanging on there for us, gifts. It's wonderful that you're a nice person. I applaud you. It's wonderful that you repent. Great, you're forgiven. But there's a walk and a lifestyle that is required. Now, so what are you going to do in this plucking up process? You want to repent and confess. Okay, that's the first thing. You, you, you got to get this stuff out. of You got to repent. There's got to be a repentance and a turning of heart and an open confession. God, I'm so, you got to confess. Let me give you an example. I remember I met this one lady. Yeah, she, she judged me. She did some awful stuff. But she started buying me gifts. And I started sending the gifts back. It was for her sake, not for mine. The gifts were awesome. I really could have kept the gifts. But you know what? The Lord says she's trying to say sorry. I said, mm. And I just walked up one day and I said, here are your gifts. You don't have to give me anything. I said, but for your own sake and for your own greatness, to come forth. I said, why don't you just go ahead on and say you're sorry? I said, but I'm going to go ahead on and forgive you on credit. And she just looked at me. She just started crying. And she said, I didn't know how to say it. I said, just, I said, it's all good. I said, we're done. And I said, baby, you're released. All is well. See, sometimes some of y'all got to stop coming through this back door. You just got to say you messed up. You did it the wrong way. You got selfish. You got bitter. That spirit of pride was ruling. You know, it's just like in a relationship. You know, when a wife don't want to say sorry, she don't want to admit that she's wrong. So she's going to start cooking good dinners and stuff like that. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Mrs. Pride in the real. 
You just got to go ahead on and confess some stuff and say, you know, look, baby, I'm sorry. I was just having me one of the PMS days, and I'm just sorry, sweetie. I'm so sorry. You know, I just got besides myself. You just need to face it. So if rep- repentance and confession is real important in the plucking up process. Next, you're going to apply the word to every unhealed area of your life. Apply the word to every unhealed area of your life. If you have an area that is unhealed, I promise you, if you don't deal with it with the word of God, demons going to flow through it. Let me give you an example. If you're angry and you're bitter, baby, you're going to latch out at somebody. If they even remotely, you mad at your mother <laughs> and they, they touch you like your mother. Man, before you know, you get flashbacks and you got that bitterness going on. And guess what? You can be used of the enemy. You become now a daughter of son of the enemy. Next, you will remove your will. I see anything you're going to do for the kingdom or get received deliverance from the kingdom. Your will got to go. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things I want. But when it comes down to the kingdom, your word should be, God, what do you will for me? What do you want? You know, there's a lot of things. There's things my mom wants from me, different people. They felt I should have went to this school. Oh, God, they just got all kind of stuff going on. But, you know, I came into my own. Oh, somebody needs to hear me today. I stepped into my own. Do you know when you become of a certain age? Some of y'all, <clears throat> I'm listening to you all over these last two days, and they're all just blaming so much on mom. Baby, that's straight up demons. Ruling and just bringing that same hurt over and over. You know you could age with that stuff if you don't let that stuff go. Do you know when unforgiveness comes in, it comes straight for the anointing? Because hmm? if you can't forgive, baby, you will not walk in the fullness of what you're called to do. See, sometimes they think prophetic vessels are hard and they think they just want people to just get over stuff. No. But I'm not going to let anybody hold on or keep that anointing from flowing. You're not that important. Nothing should stop your flow with God. Anything that stays in your heart too long, straight up hooked to the devil. And you should let it go. How many of you all in here got siblings that you've been battling with for quite a while? Probably all over something mama didn't do, some inheritance. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff totally lost focus on your anointing and what you're called for. Get over it. It's just a distraction. Get rid of the distractions. Y'all do know y'all in a deliverance house, right? All right, just thought I'd remind you again. You have to trust the power of God and the power of his word. You speak his word, you believe it, you read it, you believe it, you can decree it, you confess it, say, now God, you, I, I did, you did my part. You got to do your word. You said you couldn't lie. Now I hold you to your word. Next, you're going to remove all excuses and unholy agreements. Some of y'all got agreements of past relationships. You've agreed. Do you know you can agree with something just by having a conversation with someone, but you didn't tell them, well, no, I'm not, I can't do that. So you just sit there and listen to them. Well, guess what? That's still an agreement. Yes, it is. Because you thought you was just get off, you know, on a slit because you didn't really want to hurt nobody. But in the kingdom, you're going to have to make a stand. You have to choose what side you're going to be on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Remove all and all excuses. You know, we all could come up with stuff why we didn't do what. Well, prophetess, you just don't know my sister. Okay, all right. Next is keep your vision before you. There are days that I can walk in the flow of God. Because, see, I don't let other stuff get in there. It looks callous, though. Oh, well, prophet, you know, she just didn't care. No, you're a distraction right now, sweetheart. You are distracting. I've got my eyes on the fact that I've been given that assignment. And I'm not moving to the right or to the left until that assignment is done. Do you know if not, you will never fulfill what God wants for you? Because there's always going to be something. There'll always be somebody you need to go take care of or whatever. But you have to do what God says to. Now, how many of you, the Lord has given you assignments and told you things that you need to do? And then you want to know why stuff is not happening. Because you're in disobedience. Well, prophet, the Lord knows my heart. All right, tradition. But no. 
No, 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 no. Next, submit to the person God has sent to help you. God sends people to help you, but you have to submit to him. You know, there are seasons. There were seasons I had to be in rough places. Oh, my God. Some days I didn't even like my mentor. <laughs> just sorry. I'm just being honest. I was like, Lord, how long, Lord? Oh, Jesus, what is going on? But you know what? It was whipping that flesh in place. <laughs> when training is hard, boot camp is hard. It's hard. You don't like the sergeant. You don't like none of the people. You, you're so sorry you went into the army. You won't change your mind. Yeah, that's just real. That's just real. But it was all for a great purpose. Graduation day was coming and you're going to wear those medals. In God, you know God has medals. You know God has days of graduation. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, that's going to be some days God's going to grant you to go into those lofty places inside of him. So you have to submit to the person that God has given you. If you, I have a video on, in my school called The Making of a Prophetess, and it talks about the different um, worldwide evangelists and people that God put in my life, many prophets from around the world that I was afforded the opportunity to either, either uh, serve under or work with or help with their books or something along those lines. So, but I had to submit to them. Now, mind you, the prophetess was all in the side of my belly. Oh, it was in there. Half done, but it was in there. Yeah, you, you know, a woman's pregnant, half done, you know. Yeah, you know, baby's half together. But you know, when you're pregnant, the baby's kicking. So, you, you know, you think you're ready. How many of you all think you're ready just because you got one prophetic word and don't know if that was correct? <laughs> Tutored by nobody. Strapped up with the word by nobody. No accountability. Just Blurting out whatever you think. Don't, don't even have the ability to use the gifts all working together. So that means when they should be given a word of knowledge, they're given prophecy. They're given prophecy half out of time, tearing up people's lives. Yeah, you know God's going to hold you for that stuff. But you, if you submit under someone, they will help you to walk in the gifts. I know some of y'all long rangers. You do your own thing. You don't have no covering. Nobody. Prophet, you know, the Lord told me, okay, great. Yeah. What kind of voice you listen to? The Bible says that Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. That was all. Everybody had somebody. Show me one that didn't. Everybody other than Jesus. And then he had all his disciples, but he chose them. He chose those apostles. You got to get in there and get chosen and have someone to be able to serve under. And I know after a while, they're going to hook to you and don't want to let you go. I know they get, prophets kind of get that way sometimes, but it's okay. You're going to be able to develop and obey God. But the serving and submitting is still important. It's a part of the plucking up process. Because while you serve, you get healed and get delivered. Do you know I would know how to, go, I knew how to go to the nation? Because I helped someone go to the nation. I worked the prayer line for many years. Up at 3.30 every morning, getting prayer calls from BT, Word Network. Oh, yes. My children sleeping right under, on my feet, under uh, my daughter, on the pillow right under my, uh, under my desk while I answered calls from or through, throughout the nation. See, if you want to go to the nation, you got to serve someone and help them get this. But what you don't understand is while they're going there, he's preparing you to go there. You just don't know it. You're just paying your dues and you're learning at that time. Now, my, the last part of the plucking up process is dig out and remove all of the other voices. Some of you all got so many voices. You got the voice of pain, the voice of anger, the voice of bitterness, the voice of church hurt. Word curses that were spoken over you, now they're laid in your spirit. So every time somebody looking at you, you're always insecure. You think, oh, they want this, or they judging this. That's your, that's your voices. The plucking up process, you must pluck that stuff up. If not, you're walking a tainted word. Now, what is actually the pluck up process? It's just ad identifying the dead, the dead thing that's in you, the thing that needs to come out. What is that ugly thing that needs to come out? Come on now. What is the ugly thing? Yeah, you, there's one. 
you, you know that deep bitterness that you hear? You know that jealousy? Yeah. <laughs> Identifying even the good. Dividing the wheat from the tare. You know, you have to spot the crop. You got to know what to crop out. And you got to know whenever a crop is ready to bear fruit. But see, the prophet comes in and they pluck up that stuff. That's the reason why you got to know how to go and come before a prophet. They come to pluck up. They don't come to be your friend. They don't need you to be their friend. They come to get you delivered and send you on your way. See, when they see you, they don't see you as you are. They're not looking at you. Maybe they're looking on the inside of you. They're trying to see where that anointing is. Mm-hmm. And what you into. And are you walking it with God? And how far are you close to God? All right, let's get back to this, okay? So those of you that really have a lot of things going on and you're trying to search your deliverance out, I always suggest that they go to my website. There's something called the discipline charts. There are times that sometimes people want to hide stuff that's going on. Sometimes we do it from ourselves. It's called, we, I call it we think ourselves happy. But if something is still keeping cycles in your life, baby, that's something needs to be plucked up. Oh, it's in there. I don't know if it's from grandma. I don't know where it's from, what's it passed on, but it's in there. And those cycles and those things will keep that anointing held down. And you know what? You'll age into it and you will not have fulfilled the plan of God for your life. Baby, I'm going to seize every moment. Do you understand me? In heaven, I'm not leaving nothing in them file cabinets, baby. I'm going to access every part of it. Everything that's written in the books of heaven for me going to be done. Oh, yeah, it's going to be done. Now, these discipline charts are amazing. They are. It's about 16 of them, but baby, they're going to help you walk through who you need to forgive, who you need to grow up with, what spirits are in you, what kind of soul ties that you got. And when you finish, you're going to have black and white. And you're not going to be able to be mad at nobody but yourself because that's what it's going to be. But it will tell you what to fight and what needs to come out. All right, now it's time to kill it. I believe how you kill the enemy that's searching on the inside of you is intimacy with God. Go into the deeper place with God. So you might say, well, prophetess, what are you saying? The answer is you're not deep enough. Yeah, you sling in the word. You know the letter of the word, but you don't know the power of it. Well, prophetess, what do you mean? Because that means that thing that's still in your belly, those things that still make you go get that alcohol, that still make run women still make you searching and got a desire for somebody else making all these wrong decisions oh baby that's a sign something in there it's in there because it's not lovely it's not pure it's not honest it's not good so what is it what do you think it is it's something that has to come out if you do the charts I promise you you'll find out what's in your sisters your brothers your pattern and then you'll find out are you truly walking with what God has called you for you know true happiness will never be until you're really doing what God wants you to do do you understand in the fullness you will never meet the fullness of time until you get in that place I I'm telling you I thought it was the big house. I thought it was the husband. I thought it was the big church. I thought it was just, oh, you know, this, she gifted this. None of that. Oh, there was still something down in here because I was searching for God. And you got to go into those deeper, intimate places in God. And it's called knowing him intimately. See, when you receive all this rejection and all these betrayal and things from your decisions, that's what you got them holes in there. And unless somebody pluck it out, baby, that stuff's going to be in there. And do you know demons grow old with you? Did you know that? Actually, if they stay there too long, they'll make you mental. Did you know that? Yeah, let a person be bitter enough. Think about it. I could remember in high school, I had a girl that was with us, and she's always rivaling with her sister. And then I saw her when she was about 30, and then I saw her about 40, and I saw her not long ago. Do you know she was saying the same stuff? I was like, wow. And I told her, I said, 
I said, wow, why does this, this work in my head? I said, oh my God, we had this conversation 30 years ago. Same thing. Except the bitterness has gotten deeper. Deeper. Let's go to Isaiah 10 and 27. And at that day shall his burden be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Turn to your neighbor and say, the anointing will destroy the yoke. Destroy. Not break, not break. Because you know, if you, if you break something, that thing could come in back together. Have you ever seen jeans come back? You, you hurt your feet or something. And do you know that thing in two days are healed back together? You'd be wondering like, how'd that happen? So just imagine you break that yoke. Go ahead on just didn't break. No, he said destroy. Today we come to destroy some yokes. We come to tear them down. Yeah, but you got to give up some of this stuff. Do you know if you're bitter, you'll, you know you begin to age? Do you know your mind change? Yeah, you can't function in the fullness of God. Now, I'm going to prepare you. I have some steps for you to prepare you for after deliverance. And I want you to listen to it very carefully. Some of you all went through much on yesterday. How many of you all were touched on yesterday? Man of God, thank you so much. You notice I said man of God. Did you hear that? You heard that? Yeah, got that. Everybody heard that? He's not receiving that just yet, but I was hoping he would say it. I just wanted to loosen in the atmosphere. Uh-huh. God bless you for your testimony. How many of you did the Lord touch in here? You have to know how to maintain it. It's great that you would touch, but you got to keep that thing sealed and you got to stay in a place. And let me just tell you why. So I'm going to give you some steps that's going to help you to secure and maintain your deliverance. See, sometimes people think, oh, prophetess, I just need help. I just need deliverance. The greatest thing is to maintain it once you get it. Yeah, because if you don't put a guard and seal that thing with the word and fill it, because see, the house is clean now. Oh, that thing trying to come back. <laughs> yeah, it won't. It's ain't gonna go back in the house where it came from. Now you know that's you know that's too, that is too bossy. Uh, the demon said, "I'm going back where I come from." But if it knocks on that door and that door is, is not filled and sealed with the word of God. Let me bring it to you in the natural. You know you get rid of your boyfriend because you know he wasn't good for you anyway, right? Wasn't even anointed for you, wasn't called for you. Actually, he was a bobo, right? You know he wasn't right. But do you know right when you get ready to get to the place of surrendering to God and yielding to God? Do you know bobo going to remember your number and call you and say, what's up? Isn't it amazing how, do you know demons have sensors? You go run it. You go in the store. You're you to move to a new city. You run into Bobo, and then next thing you know, you moved. Ah, uh, see if he moved you some, baby. There's still something there. Oh, why did Bobo move you? Do you know sometimes God causes you to get to let you check yourself? Yeah, you know you run into Bobo. But see, but this time, Bobo don't know you done went to a deliverance service and you done went got strapped up and you know who you are. And see, God done down low prophetic eyes. So when Bobo look at you, you stand right back and say, and you put them prophetic eyes on them <laughs> with power. <clears throat> you ain't touching this. <laughs> Ooh, I work too hard for this deliverance. <laughs> oh, I like that. You ain't touching this. <laughs> That's better than being staying lit. You know, you gotta keep your leg. <laughs> You have to keep your candles lit. Do you understand? See y'all not trying to tell y'all how to stay. The, I'm trying to tell y'all how to deal. I'm just trying to tell y'all how to deal. Let's move fast. We're going to give you this and then we're going to get ready to do war and decree. So in the deliverance process, and now that you went through the experience, you've experienced God. God touched you. Prophetess didn't have nothing to do with it. God loosed that deliverance anointing and it hovered here. You begin to war and cry out. You saw him move at your war and decree. So now you're going to make sure for number one, that you're going to enjoy and ponder upon the experience. Those of you, now let me say this, these steps are in the book. 
It's the chapter after the healing decrees. It's in the book. It's in the book. Those of you that have it on an ebook, or those of you that have the book, it's right after the healing decrees. And it says after deliverance, the next step, okay? So number one is enjoy and ponder upon the experience. Remember, thank God for it. I can't remember which one of the, the ladies that were here, and she explained it so perfectly. She says, oh, I don't want to let go of this. She said, this atmosphere, she wanted to hold on to it. Thank God for it. Do you know sometimes the Lord's going to bring that atmosphere back for you so you can remember what he has done? Number two is remember the actual moment of his touch of healing. Do you know I can remember some times when the Lord gave me certain downloads that catastrophically changed my life? I could remember days I got up and walked, put my feet on the floor, and there was a healing, and I don't, it did it overnight. I remember those moments, and I hold them deep in my heart. Number three is save the moment of the atmosphere. Bathe in that thing. Bathe in that atmosphere. Prophetic soaking music can put an atmosphere even in your home. Do you know sometimes you got to set your home against demons? You do know you got children that got stuff, right? You might say, well, prophetess, you know, you know, we're Christian people. I don't care. You still got some kids that's going to go left there periodically. And they bring stuff in. And they change the atmosphere of your house. You ever wonder when a demon is starting trying to take over a house? Guess why? You ever clean up something and then it come right back as dirt again? You'd be wondering, like, wait a minute, what is this? That's an unclean spirit that hit your house. That means you don't let somebody walk through there or somebody's in there got some lust or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Number four, be excited about what, have, what you have experienced and go tell somebody. Let me tell you why. Now, you got to make sure that you know who you're talking to. But see, whenever God has done a mighty thing, oh, you got to tell somebody. You ever get the God to tell it? Oh, my God, I just got, you got to come, you know, you know, like the lady at the wall, you got to come see a man. I met a man. <laughs> you got to come see. You need to come see. But you know what? They begin, testimonies begin to change who you are because you get powered up. How many of you all fast and pray in here? Awesome. Awesome. You know, sometimes I know you're not supposed to say anything about, you know, supposed to really be between you and the Lord. But do you know, sometimes I've got some healing and deliverances. And God has prepared me for the mighty, mighty things in the preparation of a fast. Sometimes you don't know what a fast is for. Uh-huh. You know, but the Bible does tell us that you can take care of these kinds when you fast. You know, them these kinds, got, now they got pythons, these kinds. Yeah, night demons showing up in the house. Monitoring spirits. Y'all know what that is? People have to know what these demonic spirits are. See, y'all, have y'all ever met Jesse? Is Jesse moving in y'all? Y'all don't know Jesse? Yeah, you got to castrate Jesse. Jesse will come up and give your house hell. Tear it up. Do you hear me? Put demons in your husband's mind, demons in your wife's mind. You'd be like, what is going on? Why is she talking to me reckless? Jesse has visited the house. And somebody let her in. And she moving. You know she loves prophetic houses. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. She loves prophetic houses. And she loves prophetic vessels. So she can hold that word down. And so she can control. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Go tell somebody. Number five, find like kind. Let me say this. I'm not trying to tell y'all what church to go to. I mean, I do believe that your your pastor is probably very loyal to you. You need a place of worship. And I agree with that. But you need like kind. Deliverance changes you. When demons come out of you, you see, you hear. All of a sudden, you can see stuff you're in, and you're like, oh, no. Depression leaves you. Worry leaves you. Absolutely. It leaves you, and your eyes open up. So now you go back to your normal friends, and all of a sudden, they don't see like you see. So now, what they laughing at, you don't think it's funny no more because you know it's demons. Yeah, but at one time, you thought that stuff was funny, right? Oh, girl, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, my God, hon did a lot of stuff. You're losing power now. You're like, no, you're not transferring that stuff to me. 
See, but that one time you was just open door, don't know, little dumb Dora. Hi, girl, talking to her for two hours, receiving all her sex demons. And then want to know why you battling when you get off the phone with her. Ooh, that was a check. That was a word for somebody. That was a drop. Ooh, that was a drop for somebody. Go ahead on. I'm just going to say, go ahead on. God bless you. That one was free for sure. Number six, it says, find time to bathe in his presence. The presence will keep the flow of the anointing. It will keep, it's like a checkup. You ever want to go get a, go get a refilling? The bathing in that, that's why prophetic soaking music, listening to the word at night, keeping the word embedded in you. There's too many ways to hear the word now. Okay, I'm sorry. I still love my big Bible at home. I don't care what y'all say. I still like my big Bible. Okay, I just do. I love my device as well. Got almost 4,000 messages in here, right? Oh, but my big Bible, there's nothing like it. There's too many ways that you can hear the word of God. Some of you all can hear the word of God while you're working. That's why you want to know why your lust spirits you can't tame. You can't tame them because you don't have enough word in you. So when that lust thing comes to find it suck its thing in you again, you not word it up so it's like you got no repellent. You need something to fight it. The word is what you need. But if you don't have the like kind and you don't have the bathing and the presence to be able to power you up, you, you, it's just going to take you over. All right? Be expecting for what God is going to do. Bathe in his presence and expect the new thing. Deliverance has come. You've experienced the power. You know when deliverance comes, it is the finger of God. See, whenever the finger of God is there, you know his power is there. You know if that person is walking with the finger of God because the power will be up on them. Do you know that's for you as well? It's not just all about Prophet, it's Miranda. See, because you have to understand, I come from the pit. Y'all know I told y'all that this morning. They don't believe me. But I come from the pit. See, I just, I'm just a woman with walking a body of grace and mercy. But sometimes my ignorance and my lack of knowledge caused me to go through so much. But you know what? The Lord used it for his glory. He used every part of it. You want to you know how I know he used it? Anybody want to know? Because of her, 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 him, him, all of them. They didn't even know who I was. They didn't know me from Adam. What's God going to use you for? Why you need to get delivered? Who you need? Who needs your testimony? Chanel's not the only one. Some of you all as well. You're not obeying those calls. Just, just think you think you're going to pick up that little prophetic uh, anointing like a suit and just wear it whenever you want to and look cute in it. Come on. You need to grow up. You need to mature in the things of God. And go deeper. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to go deeper. She's growing us up. Oh, yeah, come on. Y'all want to say that? She's growing us up. Yes, yeah, time to go deeper. Definitely, definitely. Number seven, expect more revelation. When deliverance comes, you get revelation. The Lord starts to deal with you. He starts to show you where you deviated, where you missed the word, where you, you got a prophetic word, but you put your own connotations to it. The Lord began to give you deep revelation. Now the word says more. Now when you read that word, those words are coming off that page and it's soothing to your spirit. Now you're being led by the word of God. You don't have to be led by your emotions. Okay, number eight is remember uh, in a deliverance experience, wounds can be stirred up. Okay. So whenever the Lord began to bring a deliverance anointing upon you, and you start, things start moving out of your life, old desires are going to leave. God's going to begin to have you to make choices. You're going to have to make decisions to come out from among. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a whole new thing that's going to happen. If you don't, guess what? You lose the deliverance. You do. You'll find yourself just deviating right back. And you know what you'll begin to say? Uh, Prophetess, I don't know what happened. No, I just know you didn't maintain. Because you thought just because you have that wonderful experience that those demons wasn't going to get mad. So they're mad now. Because now you look different. And now you can see them. Do you know the power when you can see now? You know, there's something called spiritual blindness. Did you know that? 
Oh my God, I can't deal with people who are spiritually blind because the, you can be used by the enemy. Now, you ever want to hear me get upset? If I look at one of myself, I say, baby, you lacking on the word? What is your problem? See, because I know then the enemy can, be, can uh, use her or him as a tool. The word is it. Uh -huh. Who's walking in spiritual blindness here? I used to walk in spiritual blindness. I did. I, could, I did not know. Smiling at somebody, a straight up alligator. I didn't know any difference. Lord, have mercy. Thank God for prophets. Thank God for people that love you and just kept saying, why, why are you hanging out with them? And I'm just like, what? They're a nice friend. Alligator, biggest cuff. And one day I went in the presence. The Lord moved the scales off my eyes. Lord, have mercy. You got scales on your eyes. That's why that, that's why that demon slicked you. That's why you got seduced. Because you are spiritually blind. Oh, prophet, is she saying, I don't know the Lord? Yeah, you know him. You, just, you and him just not best friends. I'm walking with Enoch, baby. Me and Enoch walking with the Lord. We trying, to, we trying to get in that presence and get lost in him. But I need you to walk with him. You dance with him every so often and get all fluffy just because he danced with you. Yeah, but then you leave him and pick him up back at the next holiday. Oh, yeah, whatever, the next Christmas when you need, you need toys for your kids. So you're going to go on a seven-day straight fast. Jesus, give, you know, you're going to go in. Just go in. My God. That ain't no intimate relationship, baby. That's a distant lover. Oh, check yourself. Been there, done that. Intimacy is the key. You got to be in him, baby. In him. Yeah, you love your husband. Yeah, you love your wife. But they're not God. They can't feel the intimacies. Because uh -huh, when they're crazy and mad at you because you, you ain't cooked the right stuff or, or she just spent up all the money, you're going to find the intimacy going to be interesting because <laughs> they're mad. But Jesus is going to love you. His intimacy never changed. You, the, I'm going to tell you all this, and this is so true. I had a couple. This wife, had, she had maxed out cards and the husband didn't know. She said, you think he's still going to love me? I said, I really don't know. I said, but Jesus will. <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, I'm trying to ask you about my husband. I said, baby, Jesus will love you. I said, because I thought to myself, I said, well, how many did you max out? I said, what demon are you feeding? You, I said, you have a shopping demon. It was, they were all maxed out. I said, baby, what are you? You feeding something. I, they still together, so apparently he must still love her somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, but I thought to myself, well, we're going to wait a while. We're going to coach a little bit. Call me in the two months and let me know how y'all doing. Oh, my God, but nothing like God. Number nine, declare with force and consistency. Now, see, whenever, this is where, that's the reason why I want to teach you all how to prophetically war in decree. Because when you leave here, you're going to have to declare with force and consistency because there's going to be wars there's going to be battles there's going to be challenges in those areas you know i had one of um my dear daughters of the heart and she called me she said prophetess i fell into something and i said really and she said yeah she said i fell into something she said and i really need help i said you need to show up at one of these decree servers baby she said i do she said i really do I said, yeah, you wanted to call that thing out. She didn't tell me what it was. I said, but just by chance, you slipped into homosexuality. I said, but nobody just slipped into that. I said, baby, you opened that door. I said, now check them generational lines and find out where it came from. You know demons from your generational will come back and check. Did y'all know that? So you coasting in God, flowing in power, right? Oh, you done made a full turn. That thing will go back on in your daddy's legacy and your mother's legacy, touch your marriage, and then come up and bring back your daddy's disease or whatever's going on with him. But if you don't have word in you to say, not here, plead that blood, baby, and say, ha -ha. no, no open door here. But if it has an open door, that's why that bitterness and unforgiveness, you leave that open door, it can have access. And let me tell you how the powerful it is. It can not only have access to you, but it'll start flowing on your children. 
You'll do. And do you know demons have time clocks? Did you know that? I remember one a guy was telling me, he said, he said, I was good. He said, 18 looked like all, all war lose something. He said, and I was just like my family. He said, I had never had the battle. See, some of y'all don't understand what prophetic covering is. It is important that you have a covering. Now, I know they got some pastors that don't represent themselves well. And you do need a shepherd that has the heart of God. But you pray and ask God to give you someone that's in love with God. And that is selfless. It has died to the flesh. Or dying. Because there is a dying process that needs to continue. But see, without covering. See, covering is so important. See, when them bullets start to hit... See, you need somebody to be able to see that has a greater anointing than you. They will be able to see the battle before you do. See, you see these little imps right here. You still trying to deal with the little imps. But that person with that greater anointing, they are looking beyond you. See, they can go into five or ten years down and say, wait, baby, hold up. You need to prepare because something's coming. So they're strapping you up for some things that haven't even hit yet. Okay. That was a little deep. Let me just keep going. Okay. Expect to see change in your surroundings. See, all of a sudden, you're going to start looking around stuff, and you're going to be like, wait a minute. Oh, love. Your eyes is opened. Oh, yeah, you're going to start cleaning out stuff in your house. You're going to be like, oh, no, I can't have this no more. Oh, no, 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 no. The crystals can't be here. No, you can't smoke in my house. You're going to start cleaning up. Your surroundings are going to be different. And you, it's going to make you have to make some decisions. Number 11 is let the um, tangible change happen. You have to let it happen. Now, you can't have that inward change and just think you're going to go back and have coffee with your friends and be okay. You can try. Did you all hear Remy um, earlier today? He talked about, about uh, the song and how he was a straight Catholic. He was one of them. He would, he, every time he'd go around his friends, he'd say, what is happening? He'd say, I, I can't relate no more. I said, because you're changing. See, when the true change in you, me and you can relate. I can deposit in you and you can deposit in me because it's like kind. But see, if one of y'all change, see, that's why it's bad for husband and wives to not grow and flow in the spirit together. Because it's, it's horrible. Because when they begin to leave, they're uneven, they're like this. And that's bad for someone that you love. That's why you got to, you got to coast, you got to flow together. He take a leap, you better leap right with him. Wait, hold up, baby, don't leave me. Oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, wait, you going into, into wait, baby, you fasting? Hold up, sugar, I'm fasting too. Go on and be lazy. Men, uh, uh, Andrew had a powerful testimony. He said, I was just lazy. I was lazy. He said, my wife getting up, warring at five in the morning. He said, I'm counting zebras. He said, I'm just snoring down. <laughs> he said, I was just lazy, lazy. And all I could do was, oh my God. I said, really? I said, so you mean all those mornings you wasn't getting up and getting on the call? And he said, lazy prophet is just lazy. <laughs> I said, well, how you can let that woman walk as long as she wore the house shakes? I said, he said, I was sleeping all through it. I said, mm, sleeping demon. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, my God, my God, my God. Number 12 is learn how to let go and allow the change to take over you. When you find like kind, once that change happens, see, you're going to be able to relate. You're going to find like kind. Remember, number 13, remember that you are forgiven and restored. Demons come back to check. They come back to bring it back to you and say, no, you, no, remember you did this? Remember you did this? Remember that phone call? Oh, remember that desire? It brings it back to you. But baby, you tell that devil the blood <laughs> is against you. Baby, just slap him in the face with the blood. I am forgiven. Uh, <laughs> one day I had this shirt and I said, forgiven, baby, that's not me. Some of y'all need to know that, that you are forgiven. Yeah, you're forgiven. Number 14, let God continue to strengthen the inner man. That's where it comes in with the word, like kind, finding Christians of like kind. You're prophetic. I believe prophetic people should be under prophetic people. I believe that you're a word person. You need to be under people that love the word. 
so you can fellowship together. Number 15, be, willing, be a willing student of God, learning his ways and his methods. How God deals with you is not how he's going to deal with me. He deals with everybody differently. Even prophets, even you might say, well, prophets, you know, I'm a prophetic person. Prophets have their own language. That's why when I wrote the book, <laughs> she kept saying, you need to give me a glossary. These people are not going to understand this. I'm like, well, what you mean? I was kind of offended. I didn't want to tell. I was a little bit offended. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, you need a glossary. And you know what? As I began to write the glossary, and the Lord began to say, prophets have their own language. That's why prophets need prophets. You know, there are times even prophets need someone that they have to pour into Chanel. They need like kind because there's things prophets go through, nobody else goes through. There's a price prophets have to pay, nobody else. Other people can eat lollipops, fast hamburgers and everything else fast once a month. They get away and be fine. Not prophets. Oh, no, baby, they got to pay the price. And sometimes the price is even for other people. And then you can't even battle with it. You got to be happy about doing it. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. Number 16 is always be eager to hear from God. As the deliverance come in certain areas, we had a, a, a Spanish young woman here, gorgeous woman, Wonderful. And she, we couldn't find her. I said, oh, no, you're going to have to dig into this. So I gave one of my staffs to her. I said, come work with her and figure out what's going on here. And we learned that it was, for, it was to forgive her for her mother. That whole woman's continence change. Her continence change. She had this fat mouth on her. I said, baby, your mouth is fat. She said, oh. I said, well, you got, you, your mouth is reckless. But she was angry with her mother. See, anger will display in many forms. Do you know demons display in many forms? I mean, this woman would just say anything. I said, you talk to your husband like this? Oh, my goodness. What is going on? Total change of peace. And she says, she was so talking so soft, I didn't know how well to talk to her. Because in the surgery, y'all remember, she was cutting up. Lord, have mercy. My classes can be very interesting. They ignite demons. That woman was so calm and soft. I was like, Jesus, you should have been forgave your mother lady. But the Lord is good. Isn't deliverance awesome? It is awesome. You know, you all are getting ready to experience the deliverance power of God. Last but definitely not least is that you have to protect the anointing. Protect your deliverance. That's based on Matthew 12, 43 through 44. Now, the first half how you do is protect the deliverance. That means you guard the deliverance that God has given you. Somebody might say, well, prophet, is, is, didn't God do it? Yes, God did it. But, baby, he gave you tools. Don't use the tools, okay? Go ahead. Those demons going to say they're going to gonna bring seven more in there. They're going to say, oh, yeah, she went to a deliverance service. She, she up rubbed some of my imps. But I'm going to bring several more in there because I'm going back. I'm going to dominate that house. I was once there. I know her. I've been in her for years. Do you know one time we were ministering and you know what demon said? He said, I've had her for years. I said, who gave you the right to talk and rule in here? Oh. But you know when demons get ready to talk, you know they're almost ready to come out, right? This, this thing said, I've had her for years. I said, oh, you think so? Huh, my God. How do you protect the deliverance that God has given you? You're going to have to get out of those carnal situations. Yeah, you're going to have to back it up from that. Because I promise you, if you do, it's going to be an open door. You're going to slide right back in the drinking. You're going to slide right back in that bedroom. You're going to slide right back in that stuff. Because it will come back with vengeance for the same thing. Demons are stupid. They're not as smart as you think they are. They come back in the same area to dominate. Okay, a strategist will say, well, I'm going to hit her from the side. I'm going to use something different, right? Demons not all knowing and they're not all smart. However, they will try to dominate and come back the same way that they were cast out. Okay, how do you protect that deliverance? Number one, you're going to yield to God based on James 4, 7 and 8. Don't give in to the devil, but they're going to put some pressure there. He's going to put some pressure trying to make you 
to make you bow. Somebody gonna invite you to dinner. Oh yeah, you know the guy you always wanted this date with. Oh my God, he gonna, oh, I'm, he gonna be ready to take you on the date. And you gonna know that's a setup. Mm -hmm. Next thing, with that one's gonna be Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 19. Number three is long for him and enter the secret place. How many of you have heard my video on YouTube about entering the secret place? You should look at that. It's connected to the intimacy with God playlist. There's several of them. If I had to say two things that I'm known for, one is intimacy with God because that's what changed my walk and my life. It is literally what secures me. There's not one thing that I will ever teach that will never talk about the intimacies of God. And you can access it. You can access it. You can have your own walk with God. The way that God deals with you. Now with me, he talks to me and he chastises me. There's things I can't do. Very much sometime I can remember them. I said, Lord, I feel like you, you got me like a Nazarite or something. I can't do this. I can't do that. Certain houses I can't go in. Certain things. I'll go in a place and flip it out. And I'm not trying to do nothing. Shut up, Amy. I'm... <laughs> Man, that power of God will begin to move. So I used to work at Chevron Chemical, right? And this lady come in the restroom and she's like, they told me you pray for people. I said, I'm not praying for nobody in the bathroom. I said, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here, right? She said, you think you can give me a little deliverance in the bathroom? I said, look, this is crazy. I said, no, you're not going to hide. We're going to do this thing out. I'll be in service here. They won't do everything behind the door. No, we're going to expose those demons, right? The enemies of the secret place will change your world, your walk with God. it will bring you into a deeper place of loving him. That's how you get rid of the spirit of loneliness. It'll kick lust in the butt. Do you hear me? Because guess why? See, what you don't understand is that lust has become an idol. And when you uproot the idols, you put God back in his place. Oh, and then he can become your lover. Oh, my God. Some of y'all got some people in there, the idols. You know you miss Fred. This Fred was an idol. You still remember Fred's cologne. You better get Fred out of there and let God get back in his place. That's based on 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. Last but definitely not least is focus on Jesus. Your eyes, your ears, everything in your life should focus on Jesus. Jesus is the sinner. He is the deliverer. He's the healer. He walked this world. He gave, came in as an example. You got an example. You have a living human example. So you study the life of Jesus. You study his word. Study his miracles. It'll change your world. I want to thank you all so much for listening to me. Let's get ready to hear our example. Let's give God some glory. Now, if you come in here with these little Peter prayers, that's not going to work. You're not going to do nothing but just sweat yourself out. You got to touch the heavens. You got to forgive first. Come on, let's just forgive. Everybody, take a moment. Anybody in your heart, anybody, even the people who seduced you, anybody, if you got to forgive yourself. Yes, yeah, some of y'all need to forgive yourself because you went into some of that stuff. Some of y'all, your anointings are, are tied up because of things you did. People, you need to go back and tell them you're sorry. Because you know you were selfish and you know that you seduced. Come on, a moment. Clear the slate. You need God to move for you today. Now see, there's a corporate anointing here. There's a corporate power. There's a priestly anointing here. And you can just touch and go in. Move everything. Come on, I know you said prophetess, but mama rejected me. She gave me away. I don't even know who my dad is. Doesn't matter. Put it under the blood, baby. Put it under the blood. It's not worth it. Some of y'all got to go into childhood stuff. Sometimes some of y'all dealing with stuff out of your lives that wasn't even your part. It's injustice, but put it under the blood today so you can break free. And Lord, we thank you. And we bless you today. In Jesus' name, and so shall it be. Thank you for watching. 
make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when new videos are released. Prophetess Miranda's new book called Prophetic War and Decree will teach you how to war and decree for your breakthrough. This book is guaranteed to make you a warrior and step into the place God has called you to be. To purchase the book and get information on upcoming healing and deliverance services and events, make sure to visit our main website at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to give to the ministry, visit our website or text the word GIVE to 504-500-4776.